the European Union, the European Union, the European Union. Newspaper headlines were unanimous in the summer of 2014. Western nations had responded to the Kremlin's annexation of Crimea and its complexity in shooting down a Malaysian passenger airliner in Ukrainian airspace by imposing broad economic sanctions on Russia. However, the reality of the European Union's actions is quite different. The EU provides a handy timeline of the restrictive measures imposed on Russia over the last nine years, a record of inaction and failure. And herein lies the EU's fundamental fundamental flaw. It manages to go from crisis to crisis. When vulnerabilities are exposed and action is forced upon Brussels, radical thinking and remediation occur. Will the European Union collapse? Many people ask this question as the EU faces numerous challenges and crises. The 2008 economic crash increased asylum seekers seeking to reside in the EU, and the United Kingdom's vote to leave the organisation have all taken their toll. Most EU countries now have populist political leaders and parties ready to exploit disillusionment among large segments of the population, and the EU's survival is far from certain. What is the EU, and why does it exist? The European Union EU, is a political and economic union established following World War II. The war's widespread violence left many Europeans concerned about the continent's future. With increased calls for cooperation, new organisations emerged across Europe to foster trust between nations and prevent war from resuming. These organisations served as the foundation for what became known as the EU in 1993. The primary goals of the Union are to promote peace, freedom, security and justice for its citizens, as well as greater economic stability and growth in its market. The European Union is the world's largest single market. The vast majority of trade barriers between EU member states have been eliminated, allowing free movement of goods, services, capital and people across the organisation borders. This promotes economic growth by increasing economic competition. The EU not only creates a forum for debate, but it also politically and economically unites the continent. All citizens of member nations of the EU are considered EU citizens, uniting people from across the continent under a set of rights, which guarantee them equal treatment no matter which EU state they are in. Various trade deals and intergovernmental organisations helped the EU achieve its difficult goal of reconciliation and unity among member nations in its early forms. To this day, no two EU member countries have ever engaged in armed conflict with one another. Why is the EU failing? The EU suffers from a lack of democracy. The majority of major changes are decided by national governments, not the European Parliament or the EU's citizens. In many countries, all of the major political parties have historically been pro-EU. So there is a sense that Europe will do whatever it wants, regardless of who is elected. The EU structure fails to address fundamental issues, but is overly involved in contentious or political scenarios. Consider the European Commission's series of actions on money laundering, which were prompted primarily by revelation and scandal. Changes and improvements are only a result of landmark events such as the Panama Papers, leaked documents on offshore entities and politicians' financial activities, or the exposure of extreme failings such as the Dansk Bank Estonia scandal. Similarly, the EU has been moving at breakneck speed in anticipation of Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine in 2022. Eurocrats and their counterparts from other member countries rush to design and agree on sweeping sanctions packages. Meanwhile, with the appointment of a sanctions envoy and the recognition that member country implementation and third country compliance aren't yet where they should be, revisiting the substance of last year's work is now a priority for 2023. But once again, this is all reactive. New structures, directives and regulations are erected in the ashes of the disaster. Managing from crisis to crisis, on the other hand, is not a strategy, it is a sign of failure. Many analysts believe the EU is doomed to fail. There are numerous reasons for their depreciation. One of the reasons is that the nation's cultures, finances and internal regulations differ. The EU's primary goal of establishing a political union is misguided. Europe's countries have distinct histories and cultures and many people are unwilling to trade their national identities for European ones. The EU appears to be accomplishing the opposite of its stated goals, fueling extreme nationalism. 
The big countries, particularly Germany and France, dominate the EU politically, frequently agreeing on decisions before including others. Despite the EU's intentions to merge economies, few, if any, individual countries will ever cede tax and spending authority to European institutions. Another major blow was Brexit. Britain's decision to leave the EU was a devastating blow to the organisation on many levels. It was a psychological blow because it was never expected that countries would want to leave. Economically, it was detrimental because Britain had a large economy and London was a major international trade centre. It encouraged Eurosceptic leaders and parties in other EU countries to be more assertive in their pursuit of self-interest. Right-wing parties have grown in popularity across Europe in recent years, preserving their state identity and interests, or nationalism is a central focus of many of these parties. International organisations such as the EU frequently do not align with countries' national interests. Euroscepticism, or political opposition to the EU has recently grown in countries such as France, Poland and Hungary. Nationalism was also a major factor in the UK's decision to leave the EU. These sentiments endanger the Union's credibility and stability and by failing to address them, the EU and its place in Europe suffer. The coronavirus outbreak in 2020 posed a new challenge to the EU's health systems, economies and societies. It also exposed flaws and gaps in the European Union's response and coordination. Vaccine distribution in the EU was slow and inefficient. This resulted in a higher death toll and greater economic loss. Immigration from impoverished African families was freely permitted into the EU member states. Terrorists and illegal immigrants, on the other hand, are taking advantage of the Schengen Agreement's lack of controls, which allows free movement between European countries without border checks. In addition to Schengen, the EU has struggled to secure its external borders, allowing uncontrolled immigration with few controls. Once inside the EU, immigrants can travel freely between many European countries. Even though EU citizens have the right to vote in EU Parliament elections, most EU representatives are not democratically elected. Furthermore, voter turnout for EU Parliament elections has been declining since the Parliament's inception, with only 50.66% of eligible EU voters participating in 2019. The erosion of democracy and human rights in some EU member states has jeopardised the EU's core values and principles. It also strained relations between EU institutions and some national governments. It's also harmed trust and cooperation among member countries. These are just a few issues the EU is dealing with right now. Numerous others include terrorism, cyber attacks, trade wars, geopolitical conflicts and so on. The European Union is extremely popular among politicians because it is extremely beneficial to politicians. It was made to benefit them. It isn't good for voters because it denies them a voice, which is also why politicians like it. We no longer make the majority of our laws in Europe these days. We have them imposed on us by people we did not elect and cannot remove. Even if they wanted to, the people we elect have no power to change anything. Pat Condal explained why the EU is the way it is in a YouTube video. Condal, a former stand-up comedian, has received hundreds of death threats due to his videos, but has also received significant support. So what should the EU do? The key lesson is the importance of developing an overall economic security strategy, one that not only ensures the dependability of the supply chains on which the EU relies, but also recognises and leverages the bloc's position as the world's largest economy, the top trading partner for 80 countries, and the world's largest trader of goods and services. Until now, Europe has adapted to a predictable, slowly changing environment by making gradual, well-considered gear shifts. However, globalisation, new information technologies and a hyper-creative financial industry have dramatically accelerated the pace of change over the last 10 years. All of this has occurred in the context of worsening climate change and resource depletion, which forces Europe to be more agile in its decision-making. However, the current EU model is outdated and must be updated. Eurobonds and European economic harmonisation could buy time in the medium term, but Europe needs more fundamental changes to make it fit the new pace of global life, which surely involves more shared sovereignty. However, it is worth noting that the EU model itself has been used to resolve conflicts and turn problems into opportunities. The model has many supporters, and if it fails, other initiatives of shared governance, such as the African Union, will suffer as well. More such initiatives are needed in the world, not fewer. 
The success of the European model is critical for the rest of the world. This is not a call for European self-obsession, nor is it a call for isolationism. On the contrary, Europe can only play its critical global role credibly and confidently after it resolves its own economic and governance issues. What do you think the EU will look like in the next decade? What would life be like if the EU did not exist or if it collapsed?